Hello everyone, welcome to lab 5 of this introduction to remote sensing of the environment using the Google Earth Engine environment. The topic for today is still image classification and we're moving in on to part 2, continuing where we left off last week. The links to the previous labs can be found over here, so we're building on what we covered in lab 4. The objective for today and um, if you're viewing this on YouTube and you don't have the tutorial in front of you, the link to this page is in the video description. The objective for today is to further your understanding of the image classification process and improve upon the classification from last week. So we're going to start by loading up your previous classification. Now hopefully you saved your project um, last week. You'll remember that we created a number of different geometries. We have one R ROI, which we used to use it as a spatial filter to locate our image. And then we created four land cover classes with 25 points each. Um, if you haven't saved this, you can go back to, to lab four, following this link and find those steps how to get there. I have, however, provided the full code here that we've been been using, so you could just copy and paste that in. But um, the key point is that our current classification is based on the selection of these particular points. Um, so that's a manual um, addition to the image that you'll have to do yourself. Now, when we ended off last week, we had gotten to the stage where we had our classification. Um, we weren't particularly happy with it. Our red class was urban and we have a lot of it out here where we clearly do not have um, the urban land cover. So what went wrong and how can we improve it? So last week we got to just really running, learning how to sample training data and running the classification. Now, what are our options for improving this? Um, quite a few different things that we can explore and I've listed five of them here. I'm going to walk you through the next three and I'd like you to cover four and five um, in your own time and try and try and, and, and um, complete four and five and if you struggle come back to me next week. Now one of the easiest things we can change is the training sample size. Uh, we only sampled 25 pixels per class. This was quite a lot of clicking, um, but we could use polygons instead of points. And I've had a number of people asking me on YouTube to provide an example using polygons. So polygons are of course better because they sample more area and um, greatly improve the amount of variation in our training data set. So what I'm going to do is if we come up to our import section where we have our four classes, I'm going to delete all four of these. I'm going to delete agriculture, I'm going to delete forest, I'm going to delete water, I'm going to delete urban. Now if we hit run we're going to run into problems because we haven't defined um, those training data sets. So what I want you to do now though is we're going to recollect them but instead of clicking everywhere and collecting point data we're going to use this new um, rectangle tool. So you would have seen in Earth Engine that we've had drawing a shape for a long time, an irregular shape. We're going to draw a rectangle. So click that once um, this opens up the geometry imports as an uh, editable dialog. We want our four land cover classes back, so click this four times to create the four geometries. And let's use the same naming convention we did last week. Let's start with urban, water, forest, watch the spelling and agriculture. Okay. 
while we're in this section we're going to edit um, the settings here again building on uh, lab 4 so remember that for classification purposes we want to rename this or rather rather import it as a feature collection rather than a geometry and add the land cover values remember that this is a, a number starting at zero so we're creating the property land cover and assigning it a class zero that was for urban for water we do the same except this will now be class one forest will be class two agriculture class three okay um, now by clicking on one of these names you'll see that it's highlighted when it's highlighted any polygon we draw will collect those features so let's start with urban we'll click on urban and now I'm just going to draw a rectangle in the city of Cairns there we go have a look at the scale bar here it's one kilometer by one kilometer um, so that's a lot more pixels than the, the 25 we collected previously um, go on to water let's collect some water let's collect some forest now I'm not arranging this particularly well but let's see what this comes out as anyway so I've got my four classes um, we can exit there now if we say run the rest of our code should be fine we do have one error uh, but it's not a major one it's just alerting us to the fact that there's over 5,000 elements now in our feature collection and it can't print that now you'll remember from last lab that when we were using the points we only had um, 100 features now we have over 5,000 5, and immediately we have a much better classification the only you know we're not getting this urban confusion out in this area over here um, we might we may still not be happy with this um, you know looking out here a lot of it obviously isn't agriculture but that's quite a tricky class um, separating just pasture land open savanna and agriculture the more importantly it's done a very good job of pulling out the water the urban areas around cans and the forests so already a much better classification just by using um, polygons and that's increase from increasing the sample size of course we should uh, distribute our, our training data throughout the image but um, you can do that in your own time you can play around what I wanted to to cover and you can also in include more polygons if you sample too large an area you're going to hit a, a memory error um, so if you get a memory error it just means you need to reduce the size of your polygons um, if we come back to the lab so change the training sample size that's that's what we've done and it has certainly improved our classification we could change the sampling strategy um, we used um, the same number of, of points previously it would be better to use a stratified random approach and collect samples proportionate to the area of the land cover class so um, I think we'd you know to, to perfect this we'd really need to add in another class and try and separate that agriculture from just um, you know ac active agriculture versus open pasture for example and the other thing we could do is is improve that sampling strategy um, distribute our polygons um, throughout the image um, 
Something else we can try though is a different classifier. So if you come through our code that we worked on last week, you'll see here that we're using the cart um, regression tree approach. If we come under docs and have a look for EE classifier, Earth Engine classifier, you'll see that we have a number of different ones. Cart, we've got the minimum distance, it's a decision tree, random forest, and support vector machine. So if we wanted to say run a random forest instead of a cart, we could just come over here, change this to random forest, and rerun our code. And this is really the beauty of the scripting environment in that once we have a script developed, we can play around and make changes and see what works better for us. Now, um, this one certainly is not looking too good. We've got a lot of, of water classified um, as agriculture. So cart definitely performed better. However, keep, keep in mind that our, our sample size here is still low. Of this. this is just working off that one polygon. Um, if we wanted to see the effect of increasing the sample size, I could click on water and um, I would just come back here, add another water polygon. Let's add some more urban. Uh, increase the forest. And add another agriculture block and let's run that again see what we come up with taking a bit longer I might have put in too large a polygon let's see what happens Here it comes. Okay, so that's much, much improved. So what, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that you need to experiment with both the sample size and the classifier type. Um, but, and you can learn a lot from exploring how different classifiers work with, with different sample sizes. So I encourage you to have a look through the documentation on how these, um, different classifier, what well, the algorithms underlying these different classification approaches. Okay, then the other things we could do is we could change the bands that we are using. Um, by that I mean, depending on which bands are in use here, I've, we've selected basically blue through the near infrared to the swir. Um, not a lot we can add to there, but what we could do is bring in ancillary data. If you go back to lab one, in lab one, we were working with um, SRTM elevation data. So we could add in an elevation layer and use that as ancillary information in the classification. We could also derive an index like uh, NDVI or um, EVI and include that layer in our as a band to use in our classification. So I'd like you to experiment with some of those options. Um, think about what type of ancillary data you could use to help improve your classification. And then um, ultimately you might also decide that this image is just not suitable for classification. It, it is a, um, a dry season image and Possibly you want to find an image from a different time of year where you might have better contrast among different land class types. Um, the key thing there though is that, remember this is just a, a snapshot in time and for a robust classification you might want to integrate a number of images from over a year um, to include that temporal variability. Um, what I would like you to do is also try and repeat your classification, but with a Sentinel-2 image. So using the same code, we can easily update this to Sentinel-2, but you need to keep in mind that a 
couple of things are, are different and I'll just alert you to the metadata property for Sentinel-2 is cloud coverage assessment, not cloud cover. And Sentinel-2 would give us a higher spatial resolution and a number of different bands. So that's your main exercise for this lab, is to try and repeat this process with a Sentinel-2 image. So thanks very much and see you in the next lab. Cheers.